as a young journalist, I met Kok Yu Pua once uh, in Pia's house, uh, drinking beer, of course. Um, and all he talked about was all the good places to eat in Klang. Pia was such a believer in the fact that Yu Pua just should have been hailed as so much more important than they gave him credit for. And I like, so I, 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 I really became really enamored and interested in him through Pia. But of course, before that, the salesman, the, they're all out there, right? The, you know, the whole Klang context. I like the whole idea of, of uh, telling your, telling the nation story through very personal kind of interactions with people, right? Um, they so informed my own experience. So I got it immediately. Um, there's something very primitive about the way he's captured his players. The, 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 it's awkward. Like, I don't know how to describe it. His figuration is quite awkward, but they're very appealing. And then the other thing I really like is his detail with clothes and shoes and all that, that, that really kind of place the people within a time, you know, that it's quite fashion conscious, right? The work, they, they tell of the class of the people, the town they live in, the clothes are a bit clang, right? You know what I mean as well? Uh, I know it sounds rude, but it's, he, he really observes everything. Right? The whole youth, what he thinks of youth and the, the layers, the picture plane is, quite mad, right? A lot of it doesn't make any sense. There are things that float there, but then it all comes together quite beautifully. My come to Jesus moment was when I saw it at Valentine, the Indian temple painting. That's when I realized how great this man was because he never talked much about his work. You know, that whole evening, it was a little bit like three teeth. And I was there actually, so I never interviewed him. I've written about the work, but I never really interviewed him, which is so sad, right? Uh, I would have loved to. And it was at a time when everybody wanted to be in. You know, I mean, you know, I, as a painter, as a painter, I know I wanted to be in, okay? And uh, I liked the way he painted. I liked the things he was saying. And then suddenly, Kong Yu Pua was like an alternative. You know, I mean, like, you know how slick everything it did was? I mean, his lettering and all. And suddenly you had this guy who didn't care. He was very awkward with, you know, the numbers and all were just done. And it just opened up all these possibilities. He doesn't rely on art only. He, he makes, it, you know, putting the, the camera um, viewfinder thingy in there, it has informed my work ever since, you know, this playing with layers, but, not using uh, the optical illusion of paint or, or hue or whatever, but actually using things to create a picture plane, you know, to push some things back and pull. And then I love the way he combined mediums. The paintings that were, the drawings were fantastic, right? They were so good. I mean, to think they were studied. A lot of the drawings, there would be a painting that corresponded with it, right? a lot of them. Um, so I, it just blew me away that he put so much work into those wonderful drawings. And then parts of them would be painted and then parts would be just pencil, so much detail. But that painting of the temple with his, I think it's his kids, right? It was just, and he didn't care that the figures were a bit awkward. He had quite a figure type, right? In a strange sort of way. That's what I found. Uh, I mean, this whole Ib comparison, I know it's awkward, it's strange, but I don't know why I feel like he was uh, very much an everyman's Ib, you know, uh, in the sense that, I don't know, it wasn't so slick, it was more real. I mean, the story is so curious, and I like the fact that he didn't succumb to putting Indian people in front of this temple. You know, I, I like that madness as well. And the blessing of the car, uh, it speaks to me la, because it also it is about my own personal experience, right? Um, you know, those two red stripes, 
That's how all temple walls are painted, right? And he just captures it. The composition of just how he composes the whole comp uh, picture is just amazing. Uh, it, it, it reads to me like an altar, you know, uh, the placement of objects um, and the car being the central deity. I love it. The number plate, everything. Uh, uh, the shutter, uh, about seeing it through the camera. So in a way, he went back and worked from photographs, right? So it's almost like he's owning up to that as well. You know, that whole debate about, because there are, there's so much about life and yet they're completely constructed within a, a, a studio context, right? Um, they're, they're very designed works in many ways. And I think like, the camera is him saying, owning up to that as well that he's working from photographs. I don't know, this is a debate that us old guys, you know, you talk to, to some artists and they always say like, I, now it's irrelevant, but at the time when I was making work earlier, it was always, oh, you work from photograph. So I like the fact that he is also just completely straight up about that as well. It's taking these two very disparate opposite things you would think, because we grew up in a context where this whole melting pot thing, right? Um, and yet we're all very separate. I don't know that it's a strange juxtaposition, right? To put these Chinese people in front of this Indian temple. Uh, I know it, it's very base. And you know, at a very base level, I don't know, it's about, it's about multicultural Malaysia, right? It sounds really ridiculous. And because he's not ever as simple as that, it's much more, but, the whole idea of a multicultural Malaysia is very complex. I don't know whether George himself uh, was consciously trying to do that. I don't know. But for me, there is that issue as well, that it's a very complex thing and that we all share all this sameness as well. And yet we are also separate. Um, you know, all the cliches about the the... Chinese pig seller and the Indian wife beater and the Malay man, you know, whatever. So it's all very, it, it's, it's, it, I think it, it does manifest in the work, right? Uh, as well, those kind of, the complexity of, but in the end, it's a very loving portrait of Klang. And he was funny, yeah? The work had a real strong humor. It, I don't know. There, there were always clues in them that made you laugh, that made you know it well. And that's something I've always tried to look for as well. But yeah, and then the, the, the idea of small narratives, it really allowed you to think about your place within bigger stories because all the actors in his work, they're all normal, you know, they're his family, they are his, which is something I do all the time as well. I constantly draw on people, you know, and then try and link that to a, a kind of a bigger narrative, a larger narrative. The mask obviously is about hiding your face, right? It's the face you wear. You see the man in the background with the kite. There is a book that the Malaysian High Commission gave out to people. It was a book of beautiful Malaysia, little photos, all, you know, thick book that you gave out to foreign dignitaries or in your embassies overseas, you would have it. It's taken from a famous image, a tourist image, you know, for advertising for, for Malaysia. That's where it's from. But you see how awkward that is, right? The, even the scale doesn't make any sense compared to the car. And he just doesn't care. I love it. It's about the excess, right? In, in, in Bloody Slango. It was a time when we were, you know that marble arch was very controversial because they called it a marble arch. They promised that it would be a marble arch. Everyone assumed it would. And then when it was built, it was just those two marble blocks. And the rest of it was just concrete, right? So, so I, I don't know. And then 
And then the car as well, for me, if it was, it's all these things that, you know, we, we have the tallest buildings in the world, Prince Al, but then our drainage doesn't work. You know, uh, so Slango went through a period where we were, you know, um, quite angry, right, generally. And, and I remember there were all these mega projects um, that there was a lot of corruption linked to it as well. And or it could be something as hilarious as it being the road to Klangla, as in all roads lead back to Klang, you know. Uh, he, he worked on so many levels, right? I mean, look at that. The two way of it, one of the cars going to Klang and one of the cars coming away from Klang, coming into KL. In journalism, you never use the eye, right? You never, you, 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 you must detach yourself from it. And to some extent, I came into making work feeling that as well, but it was artists like uh, him who took it away from the kind of, he, he, the personal stories. And I think people like Jai and all surely also grew out of Yupua. You know what I mean? I always feel that when I went to art school, that was part of it as well. You didn't, you know, who cared, or you, in your head, you thought, who would care about what, your life is, but to try and find the parallels in your very personal existence with every man, I, he just did it so beautifully. You know, uh, that's what I took away from it, uh, a lot of it, that I think allowed me also to just make paintings of my grandmother and think that anyone else would care. You know, um, definitely he did it really beautifully. Uh, and it's strange that he can be such a big influence when I don't know. There wasn't enough material out there to actually even know much about beyond 10 works and beyond what Pia talked to me about, you know? Um, and yet he was, he was a really, I was fascinated with that, that, that whole clang centric that, you know, that you can tell a story of the world just from your five streets and that he, never felt the need to go beyond that, right? It's, uh, it, it's quite amazing. Like